Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, we're going to go back to the Raspberry Pi again, and we're going to talk a little bit about the new version of Raspberry Pi OS that came out, I'd say, roughly about a month ago or so, and it is now based on 64-bit architecture instead of 32-bit. So the Raspberry Pi team decided to do this because a lot of software packages are coming out in 64-bit only as more and more computers are moving to 64-bit only and more distribution are starting to drop 32-bit. In fact, if I remember reading correctly, I believe Fedora is on the path to drop 32-bit in the next couple of years. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me to see Debian drop it eventually, but I don't know if they will or not. Who knows? There are still a lot of good applications for 32-bit out, particularly embedded hardware and things like that. That being said, though, we're going to have a look at Raspberry Pi OS uh, the 64-bit version. Of course, this is based on Debian, and if you're looking for a good build to start as a, a starting point for playing around with Raspberry Pi as a desktop operating system, this would be a good one to check out. Now, of course, the other one, I have actually been doing most of my web design work on a Raspberry Pi for about eight or nine months now, and I'm using Manjaro personally. Now, in the future for that is I will be migrating it from an SD card to a USB 3 drive, and that way hopefully I can duplicate it and keep the drive alive every few months, just copy the operating system so it doesn't get worn down as, as quickly. Um, but what we're going to see in here is that the new Raspberry Pi OS has, it has all the tools you need to configure and manage your Raspberry Pi in addition to having a lot of the other tools and a good solid functional desktop. So let's go ahead and start in with the uh, the build here. So I'm capturing this directly on my capture card. You start it up with the uh, setup. And while this uh, goes through the boot initiation, I'll go ahead and explain my basic setup. I used Noobs to install this. And even though my version of Noobs is old, it actually always picks up the current version of um, uh, of whatever is in the in the system directories online so while my noobs is several months old at this point in time I flash onto a card and then I'm easily able to install the 64-bit from the options inside of the configuration so you see there on the flash screen there we have 64-bit Raspberry Pi now this flashing we see on the screen here this is actually more likely uh, related to the capture card than anything else I have never seen this going directly from the Pi into my monitor that seems to be something inside of there and we land on the desktop here and what you can see is it does look pretty good it is nice and the one thing I want to do here is I want to change the resolution it's booting into 720p and this screen is all um, 1080p so I want to go ahead and um, reboot this to get the new layout so again uh, the little bit of screen flashing is not something you're going to see this is an artifact of going through the capture card so once we go ahead and get this guy rebooted here all right, so we're rebooted now in 1080p resolution. You can see that it looks nice. It doesn't look like an old, old operating system. Uh, it does have all the different options that you need. It is streamlined down. You can see the Bluetooth icon up there in the right. So all the Bluetooth is working with this. Wireless is working. Of course, I'm connected into our uh, an Ethernet port, so that's what I'm using. And then we have a variety of different wallpapers we can choose from inside of here. And then you can turn on the documents, weights, bucket, and things like that. Didn't see the option for home. It might be there. I, I might have just missed it. Um, but you can see it has all the different options. Here's your panel. If you don't like your panel on the top, you can go ahead and drop it down to the bottom. You can make adjustments to the size. So everything is nice and easy to manage from the GUI right inside of our panel preferences. You can add and remove different applets onto it from, you know, spacers, launchers, a variety of different tools. And then uh, from there, you can get everything set up the way that you would like it. As far as the software, we do have a good software repository tool. It's, uh, it's kind of like a uh, synaptic package manager that's a little bit uh, easier and a little bit more user friendly. You see we have other desktops and things and uh, nothing there that's super easy to, to read and understand but uh, if people wanted to see how to install extra desktop environments we can give it a go and see what happens 
We can search for individual applications. So in this case, let's search for Evolution, which is the application that I use for doing uh, all of my email work. And you can see we have the, the whole group where, uh, which has the mail client organizers, things like that. We'll go ahead and install that one. Then there's other things. There's um, plugins and whatever else. But we'll just go ahead and um, uh, let's have a look. Some plugins. All right, yeah, we'll grab a few of the standard plugins for Evolution. Um, and then uh, this is for uh, PST imports. Uh, I'm not sure what that one is, but we'll go ahead and stick with those guys there. So now that's going to go ahead and ask for our password. And then let it do its thing. Well, that's working. Let's go ahead and have a look at other options we have. We have in there the Raspberry Pi configurations. Uh, let's see the task manager first. So this is the 8 gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4. You can see CPU usage is at 63%. We're only using 300 megabytes of the 8 gigs available. So when you're starting to do things system heavy, it will take up the processors, whatever else. Here's HTOP, get you a better view so we can see the individual uh, cores there. You can see that one of them's running at 100%. The other ones are kind of lagging off in the background. All right, we have our Evolution should be installed. That installs under Office, so boot up Evolution. Let's have a brief look at what that looks like. You know, a nice little animated um, hourglass there. It looks kind of nice. Now I'm not setting up the email address right now. Thank you. Oh, there you have, you have mail, contacts, calendars, tasks, all those different things. That's good. See what happens when we install Firefox ESR and Thunderbird. So here we're just going to install these guys through the terminal. So if you know exactly what you need to install, you can easily do that. And it's going to take a little bit of time because mostly Firefox is a big package. A few different applications already installed. Chromium Web Browser is the default. We have VLC. Not a whole ton here, but we do have your Raspberry Pi diagnostics and your. Uh, we do have the Raspberry Pi configuration in there as well. That's a speed card test. We don't want to do that. Under preferences, we have our Raspberry Pi configuration. So you can come over here. You can set up your uh, password, your host name. You can determine where it boots to. Here's overscanning on and off. Here's various services. You can turn these guys all on and off individually. Your performance. We can actually change our um, memory there. Let's see what our maximum is. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, there we go. Get just under a gig of GPU memory there. We can turn on or off the fan. We can set other, uh, other options for our fan temperatures. Uh, we're go ahead and not going to reboot just because we're still uploading software here. So there's our Firefox ESR. There's our Thunderbird. So the SD card copier, this is really good for what I'm going to do with my Manjaro build. I'm going to just drop in my SD card that I've been running it on. I'm going to go ahead and run it out into... Uh, the the USB drive instead and you can see here that you can install the software that you need It seems to have all the functions that we we might want to see and overall it looks like it runs fairly smooth I'm not sure if I tested it and I didn't test it in this video. I did test it otherwise though uh, You can run YouTube videos now. I've never tried to run YouTube videos in full 1080p uh, But they certainly run in 480 if not 720 audio does work now audio is one of the things on the raspberry pi 4 that i found a lot of raspberry pi distributions did not seem to have elements of working right in this case audio was one of them things like that and so having gotten that um working bluetooth is working wi-fi is working basically raspberry pi os works out of the box it's pretty good so if you are looking to get a raspberry pi to use as a basic desktop 
uh, workstation for something that doesn't require a lot of image editing, you know, graphics, obviously you're not going to be able to do that. But I do all the time for web design stuff because mostly we're manipulating text files you know, with the .html, .php, .whatever extensions. And with that being said, you can actually get in there quite easily and make things work. Email works great. And I use Raspberry Pis personally because as I'm traveling around the country, running my entire office off of batteries running solar power from my solar panels, I like making sure I have a variety of computers of a variety of different power sources. Raspberry Pis in my testing, while they tend to max out at 15 watts, they usually use about maximum of eight in real world applications as I have tested them with uh, power consumption readers. And so this is why I do that is I'm able to do a lot of different work on the Raspberry Pi, which has a much lower power um, uh, power footprint, which allows me to conserve as much energy as possible. And then of course, when I need to do something big, like processing a video like this, I'll turn on my big computer for that because absolutely, why not? Uh, we definitely need to have good computers around, but if, if power is a concern where you're at, and some of you may or may not be, but if power is a concern, consider running a Raspberry Pi as a desktop because if you're in a power outage type situation, I'll tell you what, get yourself a solar generator, plug this guy in. This thing here, which is like $200, can run that Raspberry Pi straight for um, quite a long time. Throw on some monitors, a few other items on this thing. You have a portable power station. I could even take this guy. Um, I actually have a mini Raspberry Pi screen, plug in some little Bluetooth type stuff, and there you go. I can go in, bring this in, set it down at a coffee shop, and pull up my little screen and do my web design on my, my tiny little Raspberry Pi. Yeah, baby. Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version is going to allow you to do that. Also, though, have a look at Manjaro. Works pretty well. I did talk previously about Pop OS. That did not work very well. Uh, not sure why, but it just didn't work out. Um, so anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. Let me know, do you use a Raspberry Pi? What do you use yours for? Let me know in the comments down below. Maybe we'll do another video updating you about all the Raspberry Pis I have built into the van of my, uh, the, the walls of my van here. But anyway, thanks for watching along, uh, and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.